Cash budget roll forward. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. The email on the website and the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, that I teach in a free online course every week. I teach about a chapter a week. This is a very common schedule that I don't think is well laid out, well put together in cash counting textbooks. What it tries to do is to summarize how somebody would put together a cash balance over a period of months. So I'd like to run through here and particularly pay attention to how this rolls forward from one month to another. <clears throat> so there's an overall picture here that you'll see at the end that if cash collections that you have a problem in this scenario in that cash collections slow over time and costs incurred may grow over time and that becomes a problem. I've tried to use color to show how this works. So in June, we see that we have a receivables balance as of June 30th of $160,000, which I put over here in green and I say, green is collecting the remaining receivable from June in later months, July, August, etc. So if I scroll back up, Collecting this balance, this 160 in July, August, and September is represented by green. So we start off July with a beginning balance, just like we do in the other months, August, September. <clears throat> we borrow money. It's a source of money from loan proceeds. Now, the, uh, the bad news is we're going to, have to pay interest expense and also repay back the loan on some schedule, which may or may not be enlisted in this type of question. <clears throat> but just be aware that it might be. The typical question you see on accounting exams, it will say sales on account, which are credit sales, sales for which you're not paid right away. So in July, and that's why we color code it because this gets complicated, we sell $300,000 on account. By definition, we haven't got cash in the door in July yet. Sales on account. Now, You'll note that although we don't get all the cash in the door, we get some of the cash in the door. It says we collect 20% of the sales in the first month following the sale. So 20% of the 300,000, we collect 60,000 in August. 80% of the money from a month's sales is collected in the second month of the sale. So 80% of 300,000, you can see the formula there, is 240,000 we collect in September, two months after the sale. So because we have different sales each month and because we have different rates of collection, you can see how this becomes complicated. We see that we get $120,000 from the receivable from the prior month in the door. Now, not only do we have sales each month, but we have cost of sales each month. And it turns out cost of sales is 65% of the sales of the prior month. So 65% of the 300,000 is 195,000. So not only do we have money coming in the door each month, we also have cost of sales going out the door. So this number is 65% of 300. August's number is 65% of 360. September's number is 65% of 270. Note also that the cost of sales is paid in the month of the sale. So we have to write checks for this expense immediately while we don't collect the money until the month after or the second month after. So that is where this cash planning is so critical because we have, to, we have to plan for the lag in collections while we have to immediately pay cost of sales. We have operating expenses equal to 8% of sales all the way across. Not unusual to plan operating expenses as a percentage of sales. We pay off part of our payable balance as of 630, so we're going to pay part of the loan proceeds. We buy some equipment, that's cash out the door, we write a check. 
let's just click on this number because if we've done it right, we're going to have the sum of all the transactions all the way down the board. In fact, one thing I'm going to do is copy sales on account and I'm going to put it at the top of the page so it doesn't distort our cash. So clicking on the bottom of July to see how we got all the ins and outs. We see that in July, whoop, cancel. We see that in July, we collect nothing on our July sales that gets collected in August and September. We collect 120 on the June sales. However, we have to write the check for 65% of the July sales, cost of sales. We have operating expenses. We pay off some loan proceeds. So if you were in a planning meeting and you were planning, you would see that your ending cash balance would be negative if you add up beginning cash, borrowing, receivables you collect, again, no collections on July sales, cost of sales, operating expenses, pay off a loan balance, buy equipment. Now, one thing we could do is we could say, well, I won't pay off any of that loan, and I end up with a positive number. Let's look at August. We can see that the ending cash balance July rolls up to the beginning cash balance of August. So what happens in August? Well, we collect on some of those July sales, 20% of them. We collect on some of the receivable balance from June and green. We have to pay, however, 65% of our cost of sales. We pay our operating expenses. But look what happens. We would end up in a negative cash balance in this month. Why? Because we have a real big sales number in August 360. We have to pay a big cost of sales number 234, and we don't start collecting on our August sales until September, October. For example, there's September where we collect 20%. To make matters worse, the problem compounds because you have a negative cash balance end of August. That negative cash balance would carry to the beginning of September. And again, we're talking about planning stage. What happens in September? We'd collect 20% of the August sales. We collect, and this is a little difficult, 80% of these July sales because it's two months after the sale. We collect 80% of the July sales in red. However, we're still collect we're still writing a check for 65% of the cost of sales in September. Still writing a check for our 8% of sales to our operating expenses. We had planned a loan repayment. What if we move that to zero? We'd end up with a positive balance. Problem is, we still and, and oh by the way, we've got an interest payment for three months at 6% on that $200,000 loan. So if I click on that cell, 200,000 in, in brown times 8% times one fourth or three months, I get my loan interest. So what I would still have to fix in the planning stage is to get rid of this negative ending balance in cash in August. I certainly can't operate with a negative balance. Okay, what if I borrowed 300,000? See what would happen. Well, I get out of the cat negative cash balance. What if I only borrowed 270? And this is the kind of analysis that businesses go through. Okay, I can borrow 270 and I get rid of the negative balance in August. But Look what happens to my interest. I'm now multiplying 270 times 8% times a quarter of a month of a year, one quarter, and my interest goes up also, another check I have to write. 
so by borrowing more money and not paying it off during the three month period, I was able to take the negative ending balances and make them positive. And again, the big draw on cash is, is that I'm writing checks for the cost of sales and I've got a delay in collecting on the sales. So that's how a cash budget operates and those are decisions you might make in your cash budget. Remember that at the website, St. Louis Test Prep, we have our toughest accounting topics, live chats that I teach on a rotating basis. These dates are updated, small group live chats, you can find out more. These are the topics I'm asked most about. And finally, the book Cost Accounting for Dummies. You're gonna see a high resolution picture of the book. I teach the book live online once a week, teach about a chapter and you can email me for information about that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.